Hey YouTube. So, as some of you may have noticed, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Esoterica started dropping. And uh, now I have Penzance. I have some Penzance. I was lucky enough to find a couple of tens of that uh, early on. But I, uh, I have not tried Stonehaven yet. And that's the other one that I hear is just amazing. A couple others I'd really like to try too. I'd really, I, honestly, I want to try them all. But uh, the two that were kind of at the top of my list were Penzance and Stonehaven. I got a couple of tins of Penzance. Uh, I went out looking for Stonehaven, and <laughs> not to my surprise at all, uh, it was sort of sold out in most places. I got very lucky and scored. Uh, one bag before that retailer went out um, they are now completely out everyone everywhere is completely out but I was able to get a bag so that was exciting so I am now going to uh, for the first time cut into a bag of Stonehaven and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on camera because I haven't seen too many people actually open those bags oftentimes they tell you what was in it but um, yeah, I might as well just put it all on camera. Of course, I put uh, most of it in the large jar, but I went ahead and put um, a small amount into a pint jar as well so that I can kind of just store it with the rest of my tobacco. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open this and try it for the first time. Now, I figure since I'm doing this, I might as well... Uh, go ahead and clean out my pipe. I don't want any ghosting. And this is actually part of my uh, routine is what I like to do, especially if I'm going to do kind of a, I wouldn't call this like a super deep cleaning, but it's definitely, uh, this is a little bit more thorough than, you know, just between smokes. Um, I like to take some rum. Uh, I, you always see people with these like expensive, like get, get out, you know, Jack Daniels, or, or they'll get out a uh, single barrel. <laughs> they'll get out like Jameson. Um, that's crazy. You know, this stuff is like, I don't know, four dollars. I didn't even think it was that. I think it was like three dollars, two dollars. I don't know. It was really cheap. Um, what you do is you do that. Just, you know, go get the cheap stuff. I mean, don't get a tiny, tiny one. You can find these for maybe a dollar, maybe dollar or two more than than the little airplane bottles. Uh, and it holds a ton and, and it'll last a long time and you don't have to worry about you know oh I'm sticking like weird pipe cleaners into the stuff that I drink that doesn't matter I'm not gonna drink this uh, but you know what when you're cleaning a pipe rum is rum you know um, maybe you want to focus less on you know leaving a sweet flavor in there and you're more interested in, in not you know not that, but um, getting a really thorough, deep clean, uh, in which case you're probably better off with like 151 or something. That stuff is not cheap. Um, now, I would really, I see a lot of people using uh, rubbing alcohol for this stuff, which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, but I just, I really want to um, impart this bit of... Uh, knowledge out there in case you guys anyone out there doesn't doesn't know this but um, I've heard people ask you know oh, why is rubbing alcohol supposedly bad for you when you know it's just alcohol and you know alcohol itself isn't that whatever well there's a reason um, rubbing alcohol denatured alcohol all the weird alcohols that you can buy uh, from the hardware store or you know off of a pharmacy shelf those are meant for you know either some sort of uh, construction purposes or medicinal purposes are not meant to consume and they are of a very very high alcohol content that could be deadly like could be lethal if you consume them therefore they actually put poisons in them uh, to make damn sure that they're pretty much lethal if you drink them and they tell you as much and the point of that is so that no one uses it to make um, probably you know kind of a holdover from prohibition and and just in general the you know the whole the the, the sort of stranglehold that <laughs> the government needs to keep on 
you know, who's making alcohol and who's not making alcohol. But um, at the same time, I mean, there's there's a good reason uh, for that in there because you don't want someone making an alcohol that is so potent and so strong that it's going to be, you know, um, deadly because it is really easy to get alcohol poisoning just from drinking stuff right off the shelf at the liquor store. Well, not literally standing there in the liquor. I don't think you'd get away with that. But the point is, um, you know, regular alcohol can certainly give you alcohol poisoning. So imagine, you know, using these high potency um, industrial and, and medicinal alcohol, you know, uh, the stuff and, and being able to actually make drinks with it. It, it could get really out of hand. That stuff is is not meant to be played around with. So there are good reasons for uh, putting putting a cap on all of that. And uh, so anyway, the point is, be very careful about using that stuff with your pipe. Um, it's not going to kill you to leave a residue on there that gets in your mouth. Um, there's not enough in there to, to really harm you, but... Um, it is going to leave a really disgusting, bitter flavor uh, that, say, Bacardi 151 or Everclear will not. So if you want a super, super potent alcohol to really get a deep clean, uh, and you're especially if you're dealing with a stem or anything that's going to impart flavor, and personally, I would, I would not use rubbing alcohol anywhere on my pipe at all because... Um, I just don't know what kind of weird, bitter flavors that's going to impart, but it's pretty disgusting. Uh, a similar concept is a lot of people are familiar with air dusters. If you've ever used an air duster and, you know, maybe it turned into a freezing spray because you kind of tilted it a little too much and some of that liquid kind of got into your mouth or and you kind of inhaled it and it sort of uh, condensed, you know, into in inside your nasal passages and maybe in your mouth, uh, and you ended up with this weird bitter taste, just even from having it in the air, uh, in your mouth. Well, that's because they add a bitterant in there to keep you from doing anything stupid with it. So, uh, you know, again, there's there's these are these these are products that are purposefully bitter. And, you know, they're designed that way. They're supposed to be disgusting. They're trying to discourage you from using them in any stupid ways. <laughs> and uh, and so I, I personally would not use them on my pipe because the whole point of cleaning a pipe is to remove weird flavors and, um, you know, purify the, the, the pipe so that you don't get any kind of aftertastes any soot, any, you know, ghosting from other blends, anything like that. Um, so why would you want to introduce, purposefully introduce, bitter, you know, chemical flavors purposefully put in there um, to deter people from using them in such ways? That's my take on cleaning pipes I think it's better to just get some rum if you don't want any flavor at all cool get whiskey I mean uh, vodka and whiskey works too honestly it's kind of a nice medium really it's not quite as sweet as this but it's not quite as flavorless as vodka it's sort of in the middle I used whiskey a bit before I bought this bottle but I haven't been cleaning pipes for a while with this and I, it hasn't even hardly gone down at all so this stuff is great. <laughs> I mean, if you look at what they charge for kind of pipe cleaning liquids, it's kind of silly. Okay. Yep. That's a pretty neutral flavor right there. Neutral taste. So I think we're ready for the Stonehaven. So this is going to be my inaugural Stonehaven smoke. Um, I should probably have sat some out for a minute I did not but you know whatever um, again I'm just gonna show you really close up what this looks like 
if you're wondering I am adjusting the focus by hand so they can kind of rack focus up and down to really give you a good good look at what the grain sort of looks like almost looks like a tree <laughs> you see the the wood the, the the knotted wood in there so I'm gonna go ahead and I usually uh, I usually don't um, rub out a flake but since I am very new to Stonehaven I'm not entirely sure how it's gonna behave I'm gonna go ahead and just rub this out a bit because uh, I know I notice especially when some flakes are a bit moist and this is a bit moist um, that sometimes it will if nothing else sort of tighten up and become very very dense down at the bottom of the bowl and sort of constrict the draft hole uh, and even make it difficult to get that bottom part burned so I'm just gonna partially rub it out into sort of a broken flake and so this is this is what I'm doing with it sort of a broken flake yeah let's see how this goes this is not probably this is um, out of the 8 ounce bag the size of flakes they give you this is half of one a flake and I'll tell you right now um, this is probably a full bowl right here just this one half um, although I wouldn't say it's a, complete, a particularly densely packed bowl so maybe if I were rubbing it out more and then I were doing the, the, the packing a little bit more carefully I'm, I don't know if I would call this a full bowl but I feel like it's a pretty strong full bowl especially if you're just doing kind of a partial rub out and sort of stuffing it in there um, which means that every flake that you see uh, in there is basically two bowls full and again or not again I haven't said this but uh, I have a you know using a pretty typical size pipe this is the Dr. Grabo Grabau however the hell uh, they pronounce it um, fancy schmancy pipe I've had for about 20 years still smokes just like it did the day I bought it which is good because it didn't actually require any breaking in well, I don't recall any but you know I probably didn't know what I was doing back then so maybe it did and I just didn't realize it it's always interesting those early flavors you get on the charring light because you really start to, to, to get the hint of, of the first sort of feel of what the tobacco is going to be like uh, but you're not really getting you know the full effect yet now this is just me I, I would definitely dry this out for a good 10 minutes at least But that's typical for all my tobaccos. Yeah. Mechanically, definitely does not want to be lit before having a bit of a dry. That is unbelievably smooth. I mean, nowhere through this entire lighting process have I felt anything harsh whatsoever. Anything.
I hesitate to to see even say it out loud because it sounds ridiculous. But the first word that comes to mind is antique. I don't I don't know why. I don't even know what that means. But I feel like I'm I feel like I'm smoking some antique aged, you know, tobacco. I don't know how they get this aged flavor into their tobaccos unless these are all 100 years old. That would explain why they have such trouble making it in great quantities. It's it's a it's on the little on the sweet side. There's this sweet leather, you know. I mean, it's just smooth as I I just I can't I can't even find anything. I there's no t tobacco I can compare this to on the level of uh, as far as the level of um, just smoothness goes. I mean, it's it's like a fine scotch, you know, that just. has a subtle flavor and goes down silky smooth and the aroma I mean it's wow and I'm, I'm really digging it I don't find this to have anywhere near the strong flavor strong you know enjoyable flavor uh, of Penzance. It's a very different, very different kind of blend. So far, there's just very light hints of flavor it's really good what I'm getting but I can't say that the flavor I'm getting is particularly strong this is a very very smooth but very very subtle blend Very interesting. It's. It, I'm not sure what it is, but there are things about it that kind of remind me of Bijou. But where I found Bijou to be very sour, this is not sour at all. This is not sour one bit, and but it, it just has the smoothness and subtleness of Bijou. Bijou is so subtle that I fight to find something in it, and I feel like this is a very, very subtle blend. I think I expected it to jump out and punch me in the face with flavor a bit more but it just kinda sits there relaxed like uh... like an old man in a rocking chair in the corner just kinda waiting waiting to bring some flavor in 
small doses. Hmm. But it's always surprising to smoke something so smooth. You know, you just you don't associate this kind of of smoothness with most tobaccos. I mean, like even when you're lighting it, it barely changes flavor. Yeah. Well, this is a to me this is a very subtle very cool customer kind of blend so many people have said that they love this even more than Penzance so I feel like it might be that my taste buds are failing me a bit and by taste buds of course when we're talking about pipe tobacco we're not really talking about taste buds, we're mostly talking about our olfactory senses because what we perceive as taste, most of what we're perceiving as taste when it comes to a pipe is actually coming from the scent. It's coming from the back of the throat. So, it could be that I'm just not actually detecting all the same flavors that they are. But I have to say, there's something really delicious that's just, just in the background. It's like the opposite of a top note. I mean, it's it's, it's really in the background. You know, you get this very smooth tobacco, and then kind of in the retro hail, or in kind of the after taste, you you have this sweet leathery goodness that's just kind of left behind well I'm going to keep smoking this obviously and I'm going to see what new things pop up as I try it out I'm also going to see how it changes when I dry it out a bit first and I mean overall I'm just excited that I can finally uh, you know, add this to my sort of repertoire of tobaccos and try it out as a blend and have it to, as something really just kind of rich and smooth to come back to and uh, and sample as I go. And, you know, I'm really kind of hoping that... Um, that it changes because I've noticed that that's one of the things that tobaccos do so they'll change on you over time and I'm looking forward to seeing like what other flavors I start to pick up uh, as I try this out maybe a different pipe too um, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to, to have this to add to my my uh, my when I say collection I don't even necessarily mean collection of tobaccos that I have I mean sort of collection of tobaccos that I have tried and that I, I can I feel familiar with because the more that I try the more f sort of familiarity I get with the whole you know gambit of types of tobacco and the more context I have when I you know sort of try a new one so when I say collection that's really what I mean I don't mean I've got that I've got blends I have some McClellan um, which one do I have? I have uh, Morton Frog Cell Frog Morton Cellar uh, coming in that I that I found, and you know it's not going to last forever. But when I'm done with it, I will have tasted that tobacco. You know, like I won't be in the dark when people talk about McClellan. I'll be able to relate to yes. You know, I know that blend, uh, and that's exciting. That's 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 really for me the exploration of all the different kinds of flavors and blends is is the big exciting part of it. Obviously, it's not pipe collecting. Uh, I'm sure I'll get some more interesting pipes later, but it's not it's not about the pipe for me. 
I think uh, Mutton Shop once asked, you know, put a question out to the pipe community. Uh, are you a pipe person or are you a tobacco person? And I remember thinking, gosh, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but over the coming months, I, I, I slowly realized, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a tobacco person. I think I would like to have some interesting pipes. But in the end, you know, I, I, I think that I'm more of the, you know, find one great pipe and just stick it out, right? You know, ride or die. Of course, you have to have more than one because you got to let your, your pipe rest. But I do, I do think that I'm going to always have that favorite pipe that I, you know, I go to when, when I can, when it's rested up. And I'll have some extras. And I'm, I, I would like to have a couple of shams, you know. I'd like to have a few more corn cobs, um, although they're kind of just a, an oddity, a fun thing. But um, I'd like to have a, sort of a more uh, Lord of the Rings style um, church warden. I have a church warden, but not 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 a Lord, not what I'd call Lord of the Rings style, you know, which is all wood. And I don't even want the plastic bit. I just want a whole, you know, fully wood church warden just to, just to experience that, you know, just to have that just for occasions. But it really comes down to, for me, uh, trying the different blends and kind of going through that adventure, that blend adventure, that flavor adventure. Anyway. All right, thanks for joining me on this leg of the flavor adventure. And I hope that you also have something delicious to smoke. And I hope to see you soon. So until next time.